watching the Kobe Bryant Memorial of LeBron giving a speech. What did he do with Fuck Your Family? Great speech, great speech by LeBron James. Great speech by LeBron James. Mamba out. Look out the guy. We were watching the uh, Kobe Bryant Memorial. As you can see, in the city of Mosaville. Hard to show here. Um, I'm sure Facebook family, all those around the world, I'm sure they're watching this game. Um, this is the return game for the LA Lakers ever since the tragic um, accident that happened in which we lost uh, such a great person and a great player. Um, we normally start it off, so, you know, the norm is kind of a little somber, but, you know, we're going to keep pushing, keep going forward and being professional as we are. Um, you know, we're going to do a dedication tonight to Kobe Bean Bryant, a.k.a. the Black Mama. Um, but, you know, we still got to start off the way we do. So what do you do, do? This is Fuck Your Opinion, the podcast. And we are live from the pit and don't give a shit. But tonight, tonight, we are definitely going to give a shit. Um, it's two can Dan. I'm Don Gotti Nash. Some man stuff love. Uh, we might be a little bit out of sorts, but you know, uh, we just we feel the same way as most of you guys who are a basketball fan, uh, lovers of the sport, lovers uh, lovers of entertainment, whatever you call it. Kobe Bryant for twenty years gave us the best amount of entertainment uh, a professional of any sport of anything can do. Um, so you know, we we we're not trying to get too emotional. But well, right now, we might be a little out of sorts, but we won't get together because we just watched this. I'm sure, and I hope most of you watched uh, the beginning of the Lakers versus the Lakers versus Portland game. Um, it was a game versus the Clippers that was supposed to be played Saturday, but because of, uh, like I said, the, the, the atrocity that happened Sunday morning, uh, everything, uh, things were postponed, and ever since then, the world has changed. The world has definitely changed. Um, so we're going to get into it. You know, Kobe Bryant, if you were not a man, I mean, we don't like to get into our age too much, but uh, we grew up watching Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, but for most of our younger years, uh, it was Kobe Bryant. Our childhood years, let's say Michael Jordan, Matthew Johnson, they were a part of our childhood for most of us in the age group, and I'm not going to say I'm not a player to afraid to admit, I'm 40, um, 40, 79 maybe, 79. Uh, so I grew up as a child watching Michael Jordan, but when, as I became, uh, you want to tell your age, bro? I already told them I'm 39, man, they know, they know so, what so you they know, we, we are the, we are the 80 base, you know what I'm saying, so we grew up watching Michael Jordan, um, as children, but when we became teens, adolescents, and men, uh, Kobe Bryant took over, and he definitely took the stage, and he took the basketball world by storm. He had many great accomplishments on and off the court. He had made some mistakes off and on the court because he proved that we are human beings, but as God gives us the grace and the power and the will to move forward, we do. You know what I'm saying? And Kobe Bryant was an excellent role model for that, man. No matter what, when everybody thought it was over, the black mama showed that um, the show went low, you know what I'm saying? Not old. I mean, his last game in the NBA, he put up 60 points. Uh, Shaq, um, Shaq has been out of Shaq asked him to put up 50. Put 50. You know, put your hand. I got to get Steph, 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 you know. So what Steph is going to do, I'm usually the main orator, 
But, um, you know, tonight I feel like I'm going to give the floor to Scott because he is a great Laker fan, big Kobe Bryant fan. Um, if you were to get into the fuck your feet since day one, you know my main man stepped in love with his own best champion for Kobe Bryant. Before the accident, you know, you know where this man has come from as far as his choice is from as a uh, in basketball player. Um, so, you know, I'm going to hit you with some fun facts, things you might not have known, some things you might not have, uh, you might know, but we just going to go into uh, a quick little march to Kobe Bryant and his legacy. Um, rest in peace to his him, his child, and what she lost and which no one wants to lose. Um, and also to the other people that were on the helicopter crash, I'm sure you have heard from their family, you know, with their names. Um, and we don't want to belittle their deaths or their uh, loss to their family by any means, but, you know, <clears throat> we always tap, tap into each other's topics, and tonight is uh, going to be about Kobe being Brian. And like I said, his accomplishments and everything he's done uh, on a professional level. He, um, and outside of basketball, he, had a, he started doing some great things. And if you didn't know about those as well, we're going to get into those. Um, just a quick history of Kobe Bryant. Uh, Kobe Bryant came into the league in 2000, in the year, well, I guess you would say the year 2000, uh, straight from high school, was it Lower Marion? Lower Marion High School, Philadelphia. Lower, Lower Marion High School in the city of Philadelphia. Um, but even though he grew up watching the 76ers and his father played as an adult, um, Kobe Bryant himself noted that he was always a Lakers fan. That's where he wanted to be. That's where he wanted to go, and that's where he wanted to make his legacy. Well, yeah, I remember, you know, jump in real quick. Kobe Bryant grew up just like he grew up, watching Magic Johnson. As I grew up watching... They got to talk to you, you got to talk to your mic, though. I can hear myself. Yeah, but you still got to talk to your mic. I got this mic. You can hear me? You know? Yeah, because it's on the mic, so you got to talk on the mic. Uh, okay. That's what I'm saying, because you're going to sound like you're in the hallway. Okay. Um, but uh, watching the Showtime Lakers is uh, he grew up doing the same thing you did, you know. Right. And give me uh, give a couple mics, that's the both of them on, so we can get you uh, a guy. Let me try to get this get, get this together real quick. Yeah, we know some technical things, so we try to bring you a little live coverage of the game, and um, you know maybe some visuals, some things that we always like to add things to the show to. Uh, you know, stepping up each level was uh, inspired, like I said, by Kobe. He said, if you can do better, do better. If you can do great, then damn sure be great. Um, and a lot of people I've seen in the past, few days shared a lot of stories about their dealing with Kobe Bryant on personal levels, and he said he always pushed everyone and anyone to strive for greatness. Um, you know, some people, you know, during this time, maybe he couldn't uh, fit the video or walk in the shoes that he was um, racing up. But um, that's what he was. He was a person that always strived for greatness, he always strived for, for, for everyone to push, push yourself, push yourself. If you feel like you have a limit, go beyond that limit. See deep down inside what you actually can accomplish. And that goes for each and every one of us. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Uh, my brother T can attest to the same thing. You know, like uh, we started this podcast, we started off how many months ago, bro? Like seven months. Seven months. And we've grown. We've grown in content, we've grown in size, we've grown in our family that uh, tuned in and rock with us every uh, Friday, you know, and, and tune in, watch us live, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We are constantly pushing ourselves. You know what I'm saying? There's three men you see before you. To achieve the level of greatness, this this uh, podcast, Fuck Your Opinion, is the start of something that we don't find, we, we don't ever think is going to end. We're trying to take this to so many levels. As you can see right now, uh, we got a uh, big brother, Seth the Lover. Uh, I don't know if you can see it too well out there, but I'll make sure you get it. Uh, we got our t-shirts here, logos, you know, we're going to... Uh, we're going to move on. We're going to push this brand. We're going to push this uh, podcast, this platform. We're going to push the levels of information. We're going to push you, um, our viewers, our family, to, uh, you know, make us great. Give us, a, you know, give us whatever. Whatever your feedback is, even though this is fuck your opinion, uh, the object 
it actually is, you know, since we always speak from the heart, even if it's fuck your opinion, we value the uh, opinions and the stories and everything that you add to this podcast. Um, like I said, I don't want to be too far, but pushing back to more Kobe Bryant, um, he was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was actually named after um, the, the beef or wheat, but the wheat product made in Japan, which is one of the most um, celebrated wheats. I know it sounds funny saying that, but beef around the world. It comes from the Kobe beef, which is a cow that actually is bred from birth to be used and for consumption. They will actually take bones and herbs and, and all kinds of shit and actually massage and the cows have strict diets. They actually push the cows to be great, the greatest beef. That, you know, I mean, I, I know, you know, it's it, a moment, you know, we all have four words, but that's what it is. The Japanese constructed, uh, or not constructed, but they developed a cow that would be considered the greatest amongst cows for its tenderness um, and its quality. It's Kobe beef. Is, uh, Kobe beef. And you see, if you know anything about beef, and I'm going to give you a quick, the more marbling, the more fat, the more tender, the more succulent, and the way better taste of beef you're going to get. No homo. Uh, 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 I'm educating. So if you're going to go some, some wild shit, fuck your opinion. But, no, really, this is one of the great. If you go to a restaurant and you order a Kobe beef steak, watch when your check comes. And how that meal is going to look. You know, I feel like you've eaten one of the greatest. Uh, Meals of your life, but that's what Kobe got his name from. This, this oh, father, okay. and his mother actually did that. I hope I need a hope. Um, it's the cattle. I'm sorry, the cattle species is called Wagyu. W A G Wagyu, Wagyu beef. But the, it's uh, from the Kobe region of Japan. So excuse me. The actual cow species is called Wagyu. W-A-G-Y-U, and it's from Kobe, Japan. So actually, Kobe Bryant didn't get his name from the actual cow. He got it from the actual area in Japan. But his dad did name him after being in a restaurant, eating the Kobe steak, ordering the Kobe steak. Yeah, that's, how he, that's how he got it. And he realized this is the greatest shit ever. The greatest steak ever. So he said, you know what? So he, maybe he went out four telling him, my son will be a great basketball player. So let's give him a name that exuberates um, greatness. You know, because that's where we're going to take it. Um, Kobe Bryant lived in English for eight years. If you didn't know one thing about Kobe Bryant, he is very fluent in Italian, some French, and Spanish. Mm-hmm. Um, he spoke at least three or four different languages. Um, if you didn't know that, surprise, Kobe Bryant was very intelligent. And this is for a high school graduate. So I want people to understand that this is one thing I tell my children. So maybe you can share this with your children. Education does not stop in school. Education is the amount of the world, the, the amount of uh, um, insight that you can gather from the world and place it amongst yourself. So, you know, he was a worldly educated guy. He wasn't, I mean, you know, somebody who went to high school, left high school, and didn't go to college. Very intelligent brother. He taught himself a lot of things. A lot of things people didn't know Kobe knew because they know his intensity and his drive on the basketball court was something that people paid more attention to. Outside of the basketball court, this man was an entrepreneur, an author. Um, he won the Academy Award for a cartoon. Did you see a show? I did it also. I'm over here fighting the microphone. Yeah, uh, Kobe had a uh, cartoon show, um, which went in basically a, bio, a short biography of his life. Um, he was doing children's books uh, because he was very, he, he was a very, in, he was, sorry, I'm saying very, but he was into the education of children on many levels. It wasn't just about scoring on the basketball court, but it was about the level and the quality of education also for children. Um, so, yeah, he um, he had a book, and he had an actual show film, so not only was he an NBA champion, Olympic gold medalist, an MVP, he also was an Academy Award winner. So, like I said, that was uh, something else. Yeah, not, not many athletes will go from um, playing the sport, the craft, retiring, and then getting an award. And to publish a children's book, yeah, that's um, and, 
when he pushed himself. I mean, he actually, and this is a story that I also heard, he act, and it's not a story like fictional, this is, I mean, uh, non-fiction, this is a fact. Kobe Bryant called J.K. Rowling, you know who that is, right? The owner for Harry Potter. Okay. He called her and actually spoke with her and actually went and sat down with her and did a short, like, interview and scene and asked her basically where she got her inspiration from because Kobe felt like he could be the next J.K. Rawlins. He felt like whatever he went into, he could be the greatest if he just studied, like basketball, because that was his philosophy. If you study and apply yourself to greatness, no matter what it is, that's what you can become. So um, just the idea of someone sitting down with the author who basically never wrote a book and saying, hey, if I can sit down and get some of your time and you can give me some kind of teaching or wisdom about how you do this, I can take that and make something of it. And he did. Right. Um, Kobe Bryant in 1996 was the youngest player in NBA history at 18 years, 2 months, and 11 days. Um and, you know, his, his first starting career wasn't great. He didn't come in and dominate the league. But Kobe Bryant, as always, like I'm going to say, he pushed himself. Kobe Bryant, his own words, he always felt like he was destined to greatness. No matter what people told him he could not do, he was going to prove himself greater than what they thought he would be. You know, Hope, I, I watched uh, Kobe Bryant uh, speak. He said his, uh, his guidance counselor when he was in middle school, told him that to become or try to become a basketball player, excuse me, um, he said his guidance counselor in middle school told him that becoming a basketball player was not a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> possible, but fucking idiot. But I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, but I mean, he was just proving that just because people don't see your greatness does not mean you're not great. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and real quick, um, he, he was in the 1997 draft, correct? Well, yep. I'm looking at it right now. Just real quick mm-hmm. to give you guys a heads up. These are the players that were taken before Kobe Bryant in 1997. Coming in number one, we had Tim Duncan, a Hall of Fame, of course. Keith Van Horn at number two. Number three, Chauncey Phillips. Number four, Antonio Daniels. Oh, that, was, that, that wasn't his draft. Oh, no. The draft was not the draft. What, what, what the fuck they gave me? Hold up. What's going on here? Oh, they gave me the 96. Um, yeah, he finished high school in '96. Yeah, I don't know why, it, why that happened. What is this um, he led the Lower Marion Aces to a season record of 31 and three in a class four uh, A state championship. Um, in 1996, wait a minute, no, because he did. Yeah, because 1996, Kobe Bryant was selected by the Charlotte Hornets as the 13th pick in the NBA draft. Um, and they traded him. The Charlotte Hornets traded Kobe Bryant to the L.A. Lakers for Vladi Divac. But which draft did you take, though? I was naming the, the <laughs> Tim Duncan draft. Yeah, that's 98. 97, 98. Hold on. What the hell? We get that together. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kobe came out with uh, Allen Iverson. I apologize. Should have known that uh, Allen Iverson being from the area, mm-hmm. playing for Georgetown. So, uh, in 1996... Kobe Bryant, uh, the draft class, these are the players that came before him. Allen Iverson was number one, of course, uh, Philadelphia. Number two, Marcus Candy. Number three, Sharif Abdul-Rahim. Number four, Stephon Marbury. Number five, Ray Allen. Number six, Antoine Walker. Number seven, Lorenzo Wright. We need to get into his story, too, because he, yeah, he's a, a very deep story, Lorenzo number, Wright. Number eight, Kerry Kittles. I number nine, Sabaki Walker. Number 10, Eric Dampier. Number 11, Todd Fuller. 12, Vatili Tatapinko. And number 13, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Just a couple other people real quick to give y'all. I'm not going to name all of them. Uh, Peyton Stoyakovich. We had Peyton at 14. Tony Duff. Tony Duff. Jermaine O'Neal. Steve Nash. Steve Nash uh, came out as well at 15. And besides that, we had a dude named Priest Lauderdale who never played hardly any damn minutes. But yeah, let's just say that um, 
this draft, these the draft people have no idea what the hell they be doing. I mean, you know, before a kid coming out of he, he, he was out of high school. He was out of high school. But he was, he was still, 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 I mean, a lot, of people, a lot of people knew that he was going to be a dog. Not to say he should have went before. I mean, think about it. Uh, Stephon Marbury, there was a kid who supposedly came out in that draft, and had he came out, he, he might have been number one over Allen Iverson. Guy by the name of Felipe Lopez. I don't know mm-hmm. if y'all seen his story. Oh, I remember Felipe. Oh, wow. yeah. Yes. Uh, Felipe Lopez, the mayor of St. Bad. John's, right? He made a very bad business decision. Yeah. Uh, but that was just a quick uh, roundup of who was taken before Kobe Bryant and the people that was in his game. And, and Kobe wanted to play for the Lakers, so he pushed for uh, the. Um, and, and I don't know, you know. It's weird because you think the Charlotte Hornets at that time, if they knew what they were getting, they definitely would have traded him for Vladdy Divac. But also remember, Vladdy Divac was with Magic and the Lakers during the era of Showtime. I mean, he was thought of as a project. So, yeah, he was thought of as a, a project. So they, they, they figured he had a lot more to offer uh, during that time. But surprise, fuck your opinion, Kobe Bryant did his thing. And in the TV right here, we got a picture of uh, Kobe on draft day with with the great David Stern. Uh, rest in peace to Commissioner uh, yeah, David Stern. David Stern as well. Um, yeah, you know, um, like I said, you know, I'm, I, I was born a, born a Lakers fan. Uh, it was not one of the uh, draft moves I wanted to take as a Lakers fan. I thought we was out of our mind for, for trading um, to get Kobe. And I'll explain a little bit more of that as we uh, go throughout the, the show. Um, in 1997, um, Kobe went to the rookie second team All NBA. 1997, Kobe wins the All Star Weekend Slam Dunk Competition, but does not play in the All Star game. Uh, we all remember if, if, if you didn't see the rookie game, uh, uh Kobe's uh, first slam dunk win, uh, check YouTube, I'm sure they have it. Um, it was phenomenal. He that's when he really showed what he was able to do. Um, when people seen his his actual skill set, um, more or less, even it's a dunk contest, but you seen the agility, the explosiveness, you seen what he was capable of doing at the rim. Um, he was the youngest starter at 19 in the first NBA All Star game. Um, he led the Lakers to three championships in a row from 2000 to 2002. Uh, first four times named in All-Star MVP. He also was named the 2007, 2009, and 2011 MVP. Um, I'm going to skip the whole incident that happened in the year 2003. Kobe made a mistake. He was young. Um, I think at that time he just married his wife, um, and it was a, it was a uh, incident that happened in Denver, Colorado that I'm not going to get too much into. But as a man, Kobe admitted his mistake, and he made a mistake. And also, uh, he made a mistake with his teammate, Shaquille O'Neal, um, which started a long-time kind of beef between the two that they settled um, outside of the public eye, but eventually Shaq and Kobe uh, basically got over their issues. But, um, you know, if you, if you knew or don't know about that situation, look it up, because I ain't going to go too far into it. But Shaq has always been my man, and uh, him and Kobe were teammates. They won a lot of uh, championships with the Lakers. And um, Shaq and Kobe, like any other big brother, little brother duo, they went through their thing, but they got through it, and they brought home the chip. Hey, hold up. Before you go on to something else, hey, if y'all want to um, chime in on Kobe, call in 240-339-5815. That's right. 240-339-5815. And I just put the number up on the um in the um chat room that's for the um, that I started with the um watch party. So right. So yeah, y'all man. call in, man, if y'all want to talk about COVID. Man, man. Y'all want to say something? We we here. We live, baby. Come on in. Um in nineteen ninety-four, I didn't even know that McDonald announced that it would not renew Kobe Bryant's endorsement contract because you know McDonald's give all the big athletes. Um, contracts, but after the incident that happened in 2003, they renewed it. I mean, they didn't renew it, but so what? Kobe still moved on. Adidas dropped him. It don't matter. Nike picked him up. Um, and he going, you know. The rest is history. The, the rest is history. Um, let's move on to uh, January 22nd, 2006. I ain't even covered up. What, they, what happened on Steph, big Kobe fans? January 22nd, 2006, what happened in Kobe's career? The hell is I don't know. Kobe Bryant scores 81 <laughs> points. 
Well, okay, you could have. Well, you're a Kobe fan. Yeah, so you could have. Oh, and, okay, hey, was that, okay. What was, was, was that? In basketball. Auto. In basketball. Auto. That was 2006? January 22nd. Yeah. Shit, that was yesterday. That's a week ago. A week ago from a week ago from uh, real quick, uh, go ahead, talk a little bit. It was in uh, Toronto. In Toronto, uh, Jalen Rose doesn't like to speak uh, about it. <laughs> Jalen Rose really said Kobe did not score. Hey, if you don't know who Jalen Rose is, he's now an NBA analyst. Um, he's been in a few films. He's been on television. Uh, Jalen Rose is a great NBA All Star himself. Um. He doesn't want to take full credit for Kobe's 81-point game. I mean, I wouldn't either because there's five guys on the court. He scored 81 points on the entire team. But Jalen Rose, people try to say, Jalen, you had that assignment that night. And Jalen was like, wait a minute. We all had that assignment. And it was just unstoppable. Can you hear that? Yeah, uh-huh. Can you hear that? Oh, okay, this is just right here. This is Jalen Rose, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I can't get the sound to come out of this TV clip. Is that you on? Yeah, I couldn't get the sound to come out. <laughs> As you see, Jalen Rose is a... Uh, he was a little salty about that. Um, but, Kobe Bryant, as you can see, I don't know if you heard it, and look it up for yourself, it's a commercial where Kobe Bryant is basically um, taking jabs at Jalen Rose because he... Uh, he had an assignment on January 2006, and Kobe scored 81 points in Toronto. Um, only one to top it is Will Chamberlain's 100-point game in 1962, which we, most of us didn't get to witness. So as far as I'm concerned, Kobe had the most high score in his game televised in the history of basketball, 81 points. And Not only that, you know, Will was playing against little guys that were like, you know, and then we, you know, I'm not gonna go. We ain't gonna go in no yeah. will, but um, yeah, we ain't, man. We and we, it's a we had a truth right now. We ain't gonna go in no will, I but never, I'm back. I'm back every week, man. I'm, I'm, I'm back full flame. I'm, 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 I'm back. Every week. Week. Just, 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 just know I'm back next week. I'm, I've, been, I've been chill. I've been chill, but even though even though the great Kobe Bryant has passed, I have adapted his Mamba mentality. To the utmost, and I will be holding no punches. I'm, I'm just saying, I never, if, if there's a record of Will scoring 100 points in a the game, then it, it's in the record books. But as far as sight, we all, most of us, got to witness Kobe's 81 and, point game. And as I put my gloves on now with the Mamba mentality, I would ask Don Gotti Nash to turn back to the TV and look. I can see it, man. I can see it. Oh, okay. I can, I, I can see right, it. Right, okay. All right, so. That right there is the start of the Mamba mentality. I mean, if you see, if you watched uh, the game tonight and you watched um, LeBron James' speech on Kobe Bryant, great speech, great speech. Bryant, and, Le- and, and listen, Kobe Bryant inspired an entire generation of basketball players, as in Michael Jordan. Um, Kobe Bryant inspired a, a complete generation of basketball players who have yet to eclipse his. Uh, ferocity on the on, on the court, you know, for a guy to come in and for his retirement game to put up sixty points. I don't even know if anyone's ever put up sixty points. Michael Jordan didn't put up. He had maybe like 27, 23, something like that with the Wizards. His retirement game was. Oh, like nobody's ever put up that many. Yeah, sixty points for a retirement game, just to let you know he just didn't have. And this is Kobe Bryant saying it. He didn't really feel like he had it anymore. So I don't know. Um, so that just gets lets you know the man's tenacity. Um, he was named. I can go on and on. Um, he surpassed Jerry West's career of twenty five thousand one hundred ninety two points as a Los Angeles Laker with an all time record at twenty five thousand two hundred eight points, and that is as a Laker. Kobe Bryant with one team, which I don't think will ever be done. No, with one team, he scored twenty five thousand points. Yeah, he, he actually got thirty. Oh, what did you say? He said 25,000. Oh, I'm sorry. As if, I'm sorry. You're right. On February 1st, 2010, 
he um, had a, he had uh, twenty five thousand points. 25,208 points as a Laker in 2010. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's been a big conversation lately. I don't know if you guys have heard it. Um, there's also a petition with, I think, close to a million signatures now that they're trying to turn Kobe Bryant into the logo, the logo of the NBA. And, and they should definitely do that uh, with all due respect to the great Jerry West, who is also a Laker. Um your time's up, uh, Jerry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's mumble time. I mean, listen, this, this, this is a, definitely a new millennial. It a is, little a new millennium. Mumble time. It's a new millennium in basketball. I mean, Jerry West, yeah. um, he was he was Mr. Yeah, basketball. He's in a couple of weeks, right? We are going to get a senior, senior, Kobe Bryant on senior, that logo. See me in a couple of weeks, man. That's where he needs to be at. We're, we're talking a couple of weeks. You, yeah, you, he's, already, he's already on the Mount Rushmore. For me, right now, listen, he's top, he's top five, six players of all time. I would say name anyone in the last 30 to 40 years who can remember a game in which Jerry West played. I mean, you know, listen, it's like I said, I'm not a, a, a Lakers fan per se, but I will say this. And I know people say, well, Michael Jordan could have been the, you know, Logo for the NBA, but Michael Jordan has his own logo. But Jerry West, if I'm not if I'm if I'm not wrong, Jerry West was a Laker, correct? He was. So he was, Jerry, and he was considered one of the the great at his time. He was considered the greatest Laker that ever played. The thing about it is, I'm pretty sure Jerry West went to about what was it, five or six NBA Finals. Uh, he only won, I believe, one. Yeah, I think they won one. One or two? I'm going to look it up real quick. But yeah, I, think they won one. I was actually on the way riding around law all the day, doing my, you know, paying my bills, checking up, seeing what was going on in the neighborhood. Uh, we had to check on a bracket Kobe fans, you know, make sure everything was all right. Um, I was thinking to myself, what the hell did Jerry West do to really deserve to be the NBA logo? Not to take anything away from the great Jerry West, but – he didn't win a bunch of championships. It's not all, it's not all about championships. Well, I'm saying it is because at that, that time, at that time, he had to go against that Boston, that, that, that Boston. Yeah, he ran. You know, they, they, I mean, what? Well, well, Boston beat the Braves. They, they, they actually made it. They made it bad for everybody in that era, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like you said, I mean, we'll see. Jerry West now. Jerry West's nickname was Mister Clutch. Um, but like I say, and let's let's also look at the. Basketball, to be honest, because we are honest here, in the 60s in which Jerry West played, uh, the, 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 I guess the diversity in basketball wasn't that great. It wasn't a lot of diversity during that time. I mean, not in uh, a league down where you could say it's almost 80% black. You know what I'm saying? Jerry West played against a lot of great NBA legends, and he definitely held his own. Um, as a small forward, it's a lot of things really. Um, well, the, the NBA never really fully says that the logo is Jerry West. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't want to admit that it is. But right here it says uh, there's a long answer, of course, and a short answer because the NBA won't admit that it's actually Jerry West on the logo. In 1969, the league hired Alvin Siegel to design their logo. They wanted something similar to the Major League Baseball's red, white, and blue design. Siegel poured through photos of NBA players for inspiration. Of course, Jerry West came to his mind, but he never truly said that it was Jerry West. But from this day to the past week, leading on to the future, that symbol needs to be the Mamba. Um, Kobe Jelly Bean Bryant. He actually, and this is. He, yeah, you actually, he won an NBA championship in 1972. That was the one he had. Um, that was the only one he had. Um, <laughs> as, as an executive. Just get at me in a couple. couple as, as an executive, he had 1982, 1980, 1985, 87, 88, 2000, 2015, and 2017. Um, so, I, I, I listen, uh, his numbers are 25,192 points, 5,366 rebounds, 6,238 assists. 
and uh, for Jerry West. So he he definitely was. Um, oh no, he was a monster. He was a monster. But hey, like I said, family. But he, um, he wasn't the mumble either. No, if Kobe played back then, Kobe would have had a thousand. He'd have had well over a hundred points a game. I mean, but anyway, it's up to you, family and fans. Um, they started a petition now. We don't know how far it's going to go. Don Gotti, he said, he's uh, said, you know, just get at me, get at me in a couple. Get at him in a couple of weeks. weeks, weeks. I already yeah. know. What's up? I already know. Step the lovers answer. Um, the man, give it to him. I mean, if you, if it's not going to be Jordan, they already put. And if you have, I'm sure you're on social media, so you've seen the memes. You've already seen actually people take poses and pictures of imposed pictures of uh, Kobe doing a move. And put them actually on the uh, logo themselves. Uh, some pe- uh, LeBron James actually said he's going to get a tattoo um, of uh, Kobe Bryant as the NBA uh, logo on social media. Well, he got something tattooed. Yeah, uh, LeBron James went on social media. Yeah, he got tattooed, but I don't know if they, yeah, see that. Get at me. Don't get at me in a couple of weeks. Get at me right now. <laughs> LeBron James I mean, actually I'm said. I'm no wrong man. He said, body. but it's the NBA That's tattoo. The, stuff it's the, the, man through, though. the NBA logo with John, with uh, Kobe Bryant is going to be his one. He, he said he's going to another man on his body. Well, it's the NBA logo, but it's not really Kobe Bryant. Kobe. Give, give, give me two weeks. Come on, man. Don't I'm, do that. Mumble mentality. Give me two weeks, man. I'll, I'll be back, man. I got nah, it, man. I will say this. I will say this. Yeah, I got it. I am scheduling an appointment with uh, Just Nelson, a.k.a. Nelson Aries, uh, greatest artist in the DMV area, also Pennsylvania, Philly, whatever. Um, I'm getting a tattoo. Me and uh, Young Kilo, Lil Stefan, we're going to get Kobe tattoos, not a portrait of Kobe, not a damn figurine of Kobe, like a jersey, you know what I'm saying? He's uh, Lil Steph talking about getting the mumble, the snake. In, in, in remembrance of Kobe, mm-hmm. um, I, I would never put a grown man's tattoo on my body. I'm, but I'm not LeBron James, and I'm not um, <laughs> a lot of these millennials and new new age people. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if, you, if he wants to give a, a, a homage to Kobe by giving putting the NBA logo with Kobe moves on, hey, hey, you know, that's Bron. <laughs> Bron, Bron, do you do what you do, Bron? Show your respect the way you show your respect. Um. You know, and uh, real quick, uh, a lot of people do not remember and do not know, but uh, Jerry West is the one that drafted Kobe Bryant. He is the one that brought Shaquille O'Neal over from Orlando Magic mm. to the Lakers. He also he also um, traded Paul Gasol to the to the Lakers for nothing. That's another that's another discussion. <laughs> and he wasn't even with the team. Ladies and gentlemen, I got for Don Gotti's own one tonight. I don't know who's going. <laughs> Jerry West left the Lakers, uh-huh. went over to help the Memphis Grizzlies be great, and traded Paul Gasol to the Lakers for his brother Marc Gasol, who is now an NBA legend, will be Hall of Fame. But that trade basically gave us Paul Gasol, ended up beating the Boston Celtics. And yeah, he actually Phil Bryant Jackson the with the tri- triangle offense. Phil Jackson brought that to uh, the Lakers. No, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah. Chicago. I mean, he brought it too, but that allowed him to call uh, Gosar, huh? The Tex Winners. The Tex Winners, the, the, winners, the uh, architect. Hall of Fame architect of the Triangle, who they once asked Tex Winners, Coach Winners, who was better, Michael Jordan or Kobe, and who was the greatest player of all time. He said, Jordan, hands down. None of these players of today's era would ever compete with Jordan. But they asked who was better between Kobe and Jordan. He said he can't answer that question. He said they are the exact. No, no, no. So, so what, did, what, what was the first answer he said? I'm just confused at what, he, what he's saying. Well, don't be confused. Just go with the flow. <laughs> he, he basically wanted, they wanted to know a comparison on Jordan and Kobe, which one was greater. He said he couldn't answer that. He said basically Kobe and Jordan are the same player. One's stronger than the other. One's faster than the other. One had an isolation game from the top of the, the key, which made his game great. Jordan's game was at the wing. Mm-hmm. He was a better wing player and a stronger player. Kobe was a better top of the key isolation player. Mm. He said, but hands down, they're the same player. And the only thing that will separate Jordan from Kobe is one championship. Mm. He said, but Jordan and Kobe in his eyes are the number one and number two greatest players of all time. 
Will Ch- I mean, uh, Bill Russell coming in around there. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and then Magic, of course. But none of these new guys are even in his top six, seven. I yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a it's a long ladder to climb to get to these guys because, and it and it really, it wasn't honestly. They're just based on their skill set. It was their will to win. Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan has always been two guys that's been described as the most ferocious players on a basketball court. So it was just the mentality, as Step keeps quoting, the Mamba mentality. It was that killer mentality which separated them from the pack. Now, we've had previous discussions where my homeboy Step says he doesn't feel like LeBron James has that same ferociousness, and that's what he feel like he's lacking. We don't, we're not going to give him stack. This is Kobe's night. But um, like I said, it's just it's a lot of things uh, Kobe Bryant did on the basketball court that gained him such notoriety. But trust me, family, learn about the man behind the game. Um, he was, uh, like I said, he had four daughters. Uh, people often ask, you know, Kobe, are you going to have a, what's going to be your, your legacy if you don't have a son? Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a hard and, 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 a, and a sad and hard for me to say, but his daughter, from what I heard, Gianna was actually, um, she was all, she was she was trying to make that next run. She was going to prove that it didn't matter whether you were male or female, it was your will to actually uh, be great. Um, uh, sad enough that her young life at the age of 13 was cut short. And also, I, I hope you know that the uh, Connecticut, the women, did you see the Huskies? The they, they had a uh, seat, They gave a jersey. They gave a seat jersey and flowers for um, Gigi because that was Gigi's favorite college. She said, you know, she wanted to play for Connecticut. If it did not, if it was not Connecticut, it was going to be Oregon. Uh, man, there were so many players. That, and I'm going to get I'm going to get into this in my, in my closing my closing when it comes to Kobe, I'm gonna give a nice little statement. But uh, yeah, yeah, UConn women, big shout out to them. Great, great organization, of course. Uh, Coach G, um, yeah, they had a seat open for GG. Um, yeah, it's real sad, man. You can go ahead and finish, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna jump into the, uh, you know, the, the, um, mamba, the mamba, the mamba, the mamba send out. Uh, sport news and TNT named Kobe Bryant top player of two thousands. We know that. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hold on, what, what year did uh, LeBron come in? I'm out of the 03. 2000, right? Yeah, but I mean, Kobe. No, I'll continue. I just want to hear what you yeah, Look, we ain't going to do this tonight about LeBron, man. We're going to leave his. We're going to be able to wipe his nose. I'm not bringing LeBron in. I just want to hear something. You just, uh, that's just something you just had to. You had yeah. to uh, okay. Well, it, looked, it, looked, it looked like he got a snake tattoo, too, though. I don't know if you know. He did? Yeah. Who? LeBron. Oh, yeah, he sure did. He got it already. Yeah, he had his own. Yeah. He, he had his own the other day. He had. He just didn't show it. He oh, so he, he just went and got it done. Look, we're not gonna do this oh, step. We ain't gonna shit. do this oh, step. Shit. We're not gonna do. Oh, you know what? Shit. Uh, step, oh, give us, give shit. us some. Uh, I see you got some some highlights. You got some some some. some, some you got some things over there on your list. Let's get into your list, step. You know, I've been dragging on. Hey, Greg, Greg, what my man, Greg D. J. Denny, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Greg, if you ain't watching. Check it. Your man LeBron already got a Kobe tattoo, man. I mean, it's it's, it's worth it. I mean, it's worth, I'm, it's I'm, worth I'm, it. I'm respecting everything LeBron's doing uh, at this point. I mean, he just well, he just passed him a few. They, 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 they better win tonight. I like they, I said, I, 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 I'm saying this on the air. I'm listen. I, I my team. Boston Celtics. I know it's terrible for me to say that this time, but now we'll give you uh, right now, Boston Celtics. Cause, right. Cause right. I don't want to be known as one of them guys that just come out and say, oh, Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. No, I am a Boston Celtics fan. Kimber Walker, uh, Gordon Haywood, these guys have been balling out. We're number one in the East. Miami's number two, but Boston right now is number one in the East. I'm a Boston Celtics fan. Um, yeah, man, did you like any Washington teams? Man? Yeah, I, 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 I like the Washington Wizards. I like the Washington Wizards. Or I mean, I was watching them when it was the Bullets. Bro, I've been going to the Capitol Center since it was the Capitol Center. Lord, dingy-ass Capitol Center over there in Landover. Uh, I mean, you just have like a lot of teams to be winning or won a lot of championships. Well, now, I mean, I, Green Bay. I, well, now, with Green Bay only won yeah. one championship in the last, what, 15 years? Uh, I mean, Boston Celtics only won since I've been watching. Now, I, can't, I, I don't take credit for 
you know, wins and shit that I, if I wasn't alive, I can't really take any credit for that. But in my time, now, now for me to say this, listen, as long as I've been watching basketball and as a fan, Chicago Bulls and the LA Lakers have eclipsed way more championships than the Boston Celtics. In the last 20 years. In the 20 years, but not the, uh, all time. No, I mean, but I can't say from, you know, I can't speak to all time. I don't want to, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to take that. Shit, they got a good, they got a good four or five in your lifetime, though. Yeah. I mean, but I, I'm just saying, they haven't been the dominant force as Shit, far as basketball. They, they, they won just as many as. We really have before, uh, before the in the last, in our lifetime. No, in our lifetime, in, in our yeah, lifetime. Yeah. In our lifetime. The bird, no, no. They want like three with bird. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I'm saying, but I'm saying in our lifetime. They but you, but I'm saying in, in comparison to what, the legends that we've grown up watching. I mean, I can't really take, I mean, Larry Bird, I mean, that, you're talking about 88. I mean, or 83. I was, shit, four years old. I can't take a four-year-old. I've been a Celtics fan since four years old. I won't sit here and, and, and run shit up the flagpole. Hey, I'm taking I'm taking that three-year-old. Washington, you say, okay, okay, I mean, I mean, but I'm just being honest, man. You know, Chicago, do, Jordan dominated the 90s. You know, Kobe basically dominated the 2000s. Not, uh, not exactly, but he was the best player in the 2000s. He had, he had some rough times. Some, right, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it was him and Duncan. Um, but yeah, yeah, like yeah, I said, yeah. the Celtics, I'm a Celtics fan. I'm not, a, uh, I want to be LA Lakers bandwagon. Um, but like I said, that's why I want, you know, Step is going to basically uh, take from here on that. Because well, I, well, look, I'm going to say this about Kobe. I do, I watch, watch it something now. Be very <laughs> 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 Put the pistol up, Step. Don't hurt the red. You know shit talk. Because you are my brother, but you do know King and the Very detailed story, brother. But check this out. In my lifetime, Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, those those are the best players I've I agree with yeah, you. I, I agree with you. Now, the way I have them in the order, y'all. No, you, said, you, said, the, right, you said the order perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying you guys. That is the true order that you want to say. I'm saying I have them in the normal order. Oh, you you right. said it. But, but if you ask me the best players I've seen, like, that's before. I can't say Will and all of them because I didn't see him play. Right. That's yeah. Jordan, Kobe, and, it's, and it's, um, LBJ. Those, right. are the, those are the best three players I've, I've seen. But, yeah, so, I mean, but, so like I said, for myself, uh, I'm a I'm a Celtics fan. Um, I, I look, that's that's my team. It's gonna be another episode, man, because we already did the joint with the Green Bay and you, but we are gonna talk about the Celtics. Yeah, we can talk about the Celtics, <laughs> man. Look, don't make me go and bring out my Celtics shit. Listen, I have no other jersey. I have one Michael Jordan jersey in my house. We put you in the hot seat. For that, for that Yo, and listen, I'll come in with the full Celtics you shit on, and then I'll come in with my full fucking Green Bay. You don't want me to come in flagging, you know what I'm saying? I can do it, bro. Trust me. You know, I'll back my shit up. But like also, I said. So it's a green thing that you are. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, so, so it's green. It's just that's my color, man. They get you. I got you. Yeah, that's what it is. It's my blood. I don't know about that. Listen, that's me. I'm a Mick. I'm a Mick. Nobody know me else, brother. I'm a Mick. That's what. That's that's me. I'm a Mick. Um, but anyway, that's my thing. But I won't want to get too far away from it. But um, like I said, as far as Kobe Bryant and his talent, it's been unmatched. You know, um, it's no, it's nothing else to be said. I mean, Kobe definitely. Um, had great teammates along the way to help him win great championships. But uh, if anybody watched the Grammys, Alicia Keys said it, the Staples Center is the uh, place house for Kobe. That Kobe built. It's the, host, the house that Kobe Bryant built. I mean, like I guess I don't see any other player uh, have, having that duration of time, uh, blood, sweat, and tears put into one team in one place. With many offers over the years to go, because, you know, it, 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 like I, I don't want to go too far, you know, into it, but I, oh, you have to ultimately respect someone that says I'm going to live and die right here. I mean, not saying respectively, we respect the Kobe Bryant, but and his words is his words. You know what I'm saying? He was going to live and die as a Laker, and he stuck to it. So you know, the man, like I said, he's a legend. Um, I'm not going to go too far because I know sometimes we run a little extra, so I'm going to let you step. Take it away from me, instead. Let us know whatever you got for your stats, uh, whatever you got lined up. Well, I'm not. I'm not really going to drop too many stats. You did a great job of explaining uh, the accomplishments, some of the, um, you know, the rough, rough roads, the, uh, the highlighted roads that Kobe went. And then you have uh, 
Achilles tear. He had some serious injuries. Oh, no, no, no. He had a, he had a couple knee injuries, man. The uh, the last one was, of course, when he was older, the Achilles tear, um, the Achilles tear. But um, I mean, this guy was the most incredible competitor that we've seen. You know what I'm saying? Um, that is why they gave him the nickname, the Mumba. I think Dwight Howard gave him. He, he actually named himself. He named himself, but I mean, you know. Yeah, a lot of people around him influenced them to name. Well, he know, said he man. took that name because his first, you know, because me, you know, family, Facebook, fuck your opinion, family, you know me. I'm the facts guy because I do my research. Kobe said he actually reinvented himself as the Mamba because he felt like his image was too clean cut when he first came. You know, when you first get in the league, they want to sell that clean cut, all American, you know, the guy has. He, he's such a, a compassionate person. But Kobe said, look, deep down inside, I'm a viper. I'm here to take everybody out. You know what I mean? So what he did was after his incident in 2003, in which I won't speak of, he figured, look, if they're going to give me the image of being not a dirty person or a dirty player, but they don't, I, I, my good guy image is spoiled. So he came, like like uh, Don said, he came up with the image of, okay, I'm, not, I'm no longer going to be the golden boy. Now I'm the mom, but now I'm striking. You got the what now? Now the, the ferocity and the, the fearlessness is going to, I'm going to show you really who, what my heart is. And people said outside of basketball, Kobe was a um, respectful, uh, very caring person, but he still had that mentality, you know. He still had that, listen, kill or be killed. He wasn't letting you win. You know, if you was going, if you was going to get past him, you was going to work for it. So, um, and in that, that respect, I mean, um, he made some enemies and some friends based off that, you know. But uh, you had to respect him. You had to respect him, his game, and what he brought to uh, the team. So, I'm sorry, Will, that we get? No, no, um, you know, one thing, I, I just want to give a brief, um, you know, lifetime, uh, you know, like I said, man, I grew up a Lakers fan. Um, I grew up a young man. That hard step, like you and, like, I mean, I watched the Wizards Bullets. I mean, I, 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 I've always. I, I grew up a basketball fan. I, play, right. I played sports my whole life, you know. Um, Was it Magic that got you with Magic Johnson is what uh, grabbed me and drawn me to the game of basketball itself. Uh, I'm a Redskins fan, of course, a DMV native. Uh, but Magic Johnson and the Showtime Lakers is what made me gravitate to the Lakers. I watched Magic, you know, very uh, as a very young man. Um, you got to remember, um, I was born in 79. So, like I said, about when we started really watching and understanding Magic, the game. Magic was drafted in 79, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I couldn't have watched that. Right. But I watched a lot of his you know, videos, and uh, as, a, as a kid, you know, they would show old highlights, and Magic Johnson to this day has got the greatest rookie season yeah. of any NBA player in history. That's why they say Magic is, it has to be top five, top six NBA players. And they said he was an all-star at all positions. All I didn't even know that. No, no, he was an all-star at all positions. He could play. No, but they literally said he was an all-star. Like, his numbers, he became an all-star at all positions, so forward, point, and center. I didn't even know he was a center. He could, well, no, he only played center in one game. Okay. He played center in the championship game against the Philadelphia 76ers, um, which I believe was the team. I might be wrong. Somebody on Facebook, uh, you know, the group, correct me if I'm wrong, might have been the team that Jelly Bean Joe Bryant played on. Mm. Uh, but... Moses Malone uh, got hurt, came back. The Lakers were down a game on the plane. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went down. Magic Johnson on the plane told his coach and his players, I'm going to play center. As a rookie, started a point guard, came in that game, that series, and played, especially that last game, or the, the, the game, I think it was five. Was that, when the, was that the birth of the baby skyhook? Was that yeah, he, he, he adapted a Kareem shot. He played all five positions. Uh, that is what drawn me to be a Lakers fan. Uh, I've been with the Lakers on and off, good times, bad times. 
Uh, of course, I I'm a, was a Bullets fan or a Wizards fan, but they just suck. <laughs> uh, it's not it's no sugar for Yeah, me. I mean, um, you know. With that being said, I remember the day Kobe Bryant was drafted. Oh, okay. I named the list of these guys that I was hoping the Lakers could have took. Um, See, I, and I always thought Eddie Jones. Cause remember Eddie Jones? Yeah, Eddie Jones was already on the Lakers, right? When we drafted Kobe. I was an Eddie Jones fan. Right, okay, glad he was starting. Yeah, he was starting. Yeah, he was okay. starting two guards. They moved him um, Jerry Weston would move him up. They moved uh, him up. They ended up in Charlotte, right? With yeah. Roddy Dean. Listen, I was highly pissed off <laughs> at the Lakers because mm -hmm. I'm sitting at home and I'm, you know, we got this young kid with the little baby bush. You know, well, yeah, you know, he had a bush all right. the way, but uh, this young kid, who, he, you could tell he had so much tenacity and fire. But he kept shooting. Mm -hmm. I mean, this motherfucker would shoot the ball. If you can remember Kobe here, shoot Kobe fan, you remember him firing away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, you sitting back saying, "The hell are you doing, dude? <laughs> like, I said, who is this kid?" Yeah. For one thing, you know, it, it was kind of uncommon to for a guy to come out of high school and then come in the league and, and start running off the break. And then the Lakers at the time was not good. We had Cedric Shabana, mm -hmm. Eddie Jones, yeah. Big Van Exel, yeah. Alvin Campbell. Yeah. We didn't have Shaq. Yeah. Shaq didn't come to the later year. Later. Next year. Right. Remember? Yeah, you right. So, oh, that, but he came with them. No. No, he came. He was playing with No, he wasn't. He was playing with Orlando. With him and King Harden. Because yeah. remember, they lost, they lost to Elijah Wan. He was a rookie, though. See, Kobe was a rookie. No, no, I'm bro. pretty sure that Kobe, when Kobe got drafted to the to Charlotte and got traded to the Lakers, Shaq came the very next year. Because Houston won the championship. Because Elijah Yeah, would have came in Yeah, but that would have been when that would have he got drafted. He would have got drafted in that in he, June. Kobe got and drafted in '96. Yeah, then Shaq went to them in '96. Shaq didn't come in '97. Because they lost a couple of years before he before they won. We can pull that up, but I'm pretty sure uh, you got to remember. Houston won the championship in 1995. Shaq was there 96, 97. Exactly. But so Michael so he, came, he, he came the year after same Houston. Year. It's the same year. It was the same year? It's the same year because Kobe came in 96, 97. He came the end of that. Um, okay, well, well, okay, so. Because they, they lost that first year. So, see, he was there. See, Shaq was there 96, 97. Now, pull up Kobe's real quick. Anyway, like I said, I, I remember this. I just might have got the years mixed up, but. I remember our team, you know, was supposed to do well. And, uh, yeah, no, 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 you're absolutely right. Yeah, because Kobe, 96, 96. Yeah, because Kobe shot four air balls in the Utah Jazz. Now, the reason I say that, the reason I know that is I seen something the other day with Jerry West. And they just, they saw about Jerry, matter of fact, they saw about Jerry West. And they were saying that why he was, he was talking about draft, he was, he was thinking about drafting Kobe. But he was, it had in his mind to draft Kobe. He was on the backside working on Shaq deal. So that's what he Yeah, you're that. right, you're right. You're that's, right. Right. that's how I that's how and, I that shit And that year, Shaq and Kobe, but Kobe didn't start. He was a six man. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that Eddie year, Jones. Eddie Jones was the starter. That was my man. Yeah, he, he, he started for a couple of years. Yeah, I love, I love Eddie Jones was the dude at Temple. My God. Yeah. And, and, um, you I mean, listen, Facebook fan, I'm sorry we might lose you because, you know, normally we talk about topics, but we're getting into sports. You, we, we basketball, bro. Hey, we, as, you go, as, we, as we call out these names, some people are like, look, guys, y'all, oh, this is a basketball night. This is a Mazda Kobe. So just bear with us, but go ahead. You, um, you basketball so that guy. Year, I remember Kobe Bryant. You know, I, I didn't like him. Right. I couldn't stand his ass. And uh, I remember saying to myself, we need to get rid of this dude. <laughs> He's taking playing time from Eddie Jones. Um, we get to Utah. Shaq, you know, I mean, we got Shaq, we got high expectations. It's like this fan. We ready to we, man, we ready to go to the championship. Pass the ball, Kobe. Pass the ball, Kobe. <laughs> but Kobe. Even after shooting them four air balls in Utah, losing the game, because he took one of the game shots that mm -hmm. kind of cost us the game, he didn't hit it, he shot an air ball. That night, they said Kobe flew back to you, uh, back to L.A., went straight back into the gym. He went back into the gym and didn't leave the gym until the next morning, hours, hours. He said he would just shoot. They said they never seen that like They never seen an NBA player with so much drive and determination. The young man went in there, and that is what created the mumble. That is what created Kobe. He, so he the next year, he was uh, 
Well, he went to the he went to the All Star game as a rookie, correct? Yeah. He was in the dunk contest. Yeah, he was, he was an all-star. He was a, not, not the rookie. He was the next year, he went to the all-star yeah, game yeah, as the sixth man. He still didn't start. He went to the all-star game as the sixth man. They won the sixth man, I believe. He might have, you know, I'm, I might be getting a little out. I think so, I think so. But he definitely went to the all-star game, won the, won the dunk contest. Um, and then he was, it was, he was a lot. That is, is what kicked it off. And then even still, I wasn't sold on him. I said, you know, man, this dude Eddie Jones is my guy. We ended up, get, we all quit we ended up getting, Eddie getting Eddie Jones up out of there. Mm-hmm. We ended up getting Nick the Van X out of there, which broke my heart because I love Nick, 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 this is when Kobe was coming in. I mean, we talking about Kobe's in Hollywood. He's playing in uh, Brandy's show. Uh, oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's he in Brand. What, 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 Maurice, Maurice, yeah. He's playing in Maurice. He's taking Maurice to the prom. Yep. I, uh, I mean, this shit. guy's making a name for himself, and that is around the time that he met his wife, Mrs. Bryant. I um, mean, just real quick, you know, we, we're talking a lot about Kobe, man, and, and that's what we, we come here to do. We're, we're Kobe fans, but... All week, man, has been a very rough time for basketball fans, just human beings in general, because a lot of times we lose sight at the wife. Vanessa. Know, Vanessa. Who we stuck by She's a soldier. Listen, we lose sight at what she's going through right now. She just released a statement yesterday, I believe, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the statement was, was, was incredible. It was brief. Yeah, very brief and very subtle, but very sincere. Um, but... You know, a lot of times we forget about the other people. They're hurting. Um, They're really hurting. That are really hurting. We, we cannot forget about the other people in the, in the helicopter. Before I, I got on topic about, you know, me growing up as a Kobe fan. Um, but I watched this guy grow. So sometimes, you know, like when I heard my son call me and said, Dad, you heard Kobe died. And I could hear the pain in his voice because my son grew up. A Kobe fan. I text you. And, yeah. and the first person I text, because yeah. my daughter texts me. And she's, listen, my daughter's 15. Mm-hmm. She doesn't watch basketball. Um, she, you know, she's a 15 year old girl. So I, this is when, when you, when people ask you, what were you doing at this moment in time? I'll never forget, I was on watching TV in my bedroom, and I got a text from my daughter that said, Kobe Bryant is dead. No lie, Facebook family, uh, fuck your opinion, fam. The first person I text was Stephanie Lego, and I said, Steph, is this? Did you hear about this? I'm like, is this because I'm, I'm not, I, you know, I, honestly, and I'm sure people will say this to this uh, even right now. It's still, a, it's, it's still unbelievable. Like, you know, even Shaquille O'Neal said, when well, his son, he said, uh, uh, his son or his oldest son. Text him or a friend of his and said, Hey, dad, you know Kobe's dead. And he you knows his friend. He said, He got a text from a guy said, a call saying, Man, Kobe's dead. He said, First, Shaq said, The first thing he told somebody is, Man, get off my phone with that yeah, bullshit. He was yeah, he said, Man, get off my and phone yeah, with that bullshit. Yeah, I don't even want to hear. I thought the same thing. And then Shaq said, The phone calls kept coming in. Uh, real quick, before I finish the, the last little bit of my story, let's give homage and let's give thoughts to the other people that was in the uh, helicopter. Of course, uh, from left to right, uh, we got Gigi Gianna and Kobe Bryant at the top left here. You'll see it on the screen. Um, we have Peyton and Sarah Chester. Um, the, you know, we have uh, Christina Mazer, Alyssa Altabelli, John Altabelli, Terry Altabelli. And that's Alyssa against t- her entire family, though. Yeah, that's, that's the mother, father, and the daughter. Uh, we have Era Rabayan. He's uh, the, the helicopter, the helicopter father. Um, so a lot of times, you know, because I had a lot of people on Facebook, man, that were, you know, I, you know, this whole weekend just didn't seem real. Um, and I want to give a brief, um, because like I said, I just want to give a brief summary on what, so what has. I don't know if you heard about it or if if you're really keeping up with the story, but um, supposedly the helicopter pilot met some very heavy fog. Um, and he was in between communication towers. Uh, if you don't know what communication tower is, when you're when you're flying, it's basically like air traffic control. They tell you 
what objects to look for with other planes or other, other aircraft or in your area or in your flight path. Um, with him communicating with uh, air traffic control, he spoke of being in a very thick fog in which he could not you see. So they could not, and he kind of flew below the radar. So what air cab traffic control instructed the pilot to do was get to a level in which that they could use their radar instead of his equipment because he basically at that point was flying blind. Um, so what happened was he basically wanted to get above the clouds and find a safe place to land, um, you know, uh, uh, just in, for visual to get a safe place to land because it was some thick fog because he didn't feel like it was, it was, it, it, this, he felt the situation was beginning too cautious. What happened from uh, reports is that he lost communication with air traffic control and which he made a hard enough turn because he thought that he had went above one mountain elevation and he didn't know that there was another elevation that he had to climb. Therefore, uh, the helicopter slammed into the side of the mountain and it was with so much force that it left a crater. Because he, it wasn't us. It was, it, I know it's a lot of conspiracy theories about, you know, Illuminati, LeBron James, you know, the pilot was drunk. It was a simple freak accident. The, the, the helicopter pilot, instead of relying on his own instruments, he became unaware of the elevation in which he was climbing at with the helicopter. And tragically, he slammed into the side of a mountain trying to get out of a fall. And real quick, just to touch on something, because um, there is some things that we were talking about do do well. I'm not going to get into all that. We're not really uh, political. Uh, fuck your opinion. Uh, but the great Republican Brad Sherman, after the accident, what happened with the helicopter, with the tragic death, is uh, passing a bill. Uh, after, the tra after the tragedy that claimed the life of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, Gianna, and seven others, I am introducing a bill to require the FAA to strengthen safety standards for helicopters that require the use of terrain awareness mm -hmm. and warning systems to mm -hmm. save lives. Basically, touching on what Dan just explained on how the helicopter, you know, and the pilot was struggling with the... Uh, he was flying blind. He was flying blind and it hit rough terrain. It, the helicopter hit something. He hit uh, the side of the all, of, all of the... Passengers were killed on top on instant uh, impact. Um, they said I read something the other day, yesterday I believe, uh, when they found Kobe Bryant's body. His body was holding his daughter. They 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 basically died together on impact. You know, of course, you, you can imagine how it looked, but he died holding his daughter. One thing that I couldn't stop thinking about in my mind because I have two daughters, two sons, and I know you guys have children. Uh, we love our children very much. Fuck your opinion. Our, our family, our friends, this group is very family orientated. There's nothing that we will not do for our children. What could you possibly think in your mind is going on through Kobe's brain when he's sitting there in the helicopter with, these, with his daughters and the other parents are thinking the same thing? What could you tell your, your child at the moment? You could just and, pray and, and just, just have a soul. The only thing that I could think that I would say that I would look if I had to look in my daughter or my son's, you know, any of my children's eye in, in danger, knowing that this could be the last time, is tell them that I love you and that it's going to be okay. We're going to a better place if that's where we're going. The, and I'm sure that they didn't even, um, honestly, and uh, not honestly, but another fact of that is, actually, that morning Kobe had went to took his daughter to church. They actually went to church for wow. mass, wow. and from church. They left there and then went to the helicopter and proceeded. And another thing that I was not aware of that I believe uh, someone told me today, because we've been talking about this all week, and I know Facebook family, I've been reading your comments. A um, couple of our guys in the group, Greg, uh, what's the other guy, Antonio? Uh, Antonio, uh, just a couple of great guys that's always commenting. A lot of the females in our group, I want to I want to give a special shout out to Y'all are keeping this group moving, man. Y'all are ready. Hey, thank you. We, we appreciate you all. Um, but um, it was something that Kobe and Vanessa both agreed upon, is that after they had children, they would never fly in a helicopter together. Yeah. Yeah, that was the truth. That was the truth. That's the truth. true story. Kobe and Vanessa both agreed. This is not an opinion. This is facts. That they would never fly together with the children 
It would always be one or the other. And a lot of people would say, well, why the hell was Kobe flying in a helicopter? Kobe has flown in a helicopter yes. for 25, 20 something years. And he's, he flies in a helicopter more than he drives in a car. And you know what? And I got a fact, the facts behind that. I'll give you a brief fact. Uh, there was an interview with Alex Rodriguez. I don't know if you've seen it, but Alex Rodriguez had a, a small uh, podcast and he had took Kobe on. And he asked Kobe Bryant, why do you choose to travel by Time. helicopter? Time. Kobe, this is actual Kobe, this is Kobe's words. He said that between the travel to the gym, the training facility, and home to be with his daughters, he used a helicopter because it only took him 15 minutes to get to where he needed to be, and that was with his family because that was the most important thing. He said that he had a, speak, a talk with his wife, Vanessa, and she said, you know what, I can pick the children up from school, I'll be there, and Kobe told his wife, no, I'm already traveling, playing basketball, I'm already away from my family enough, when I'm home, I will do whatever I can and make the effort to be there for my children, if it's picking them up for school, being there, he said, because what, what hurt, he said one time, he was driving and got caught in traffic. Got caught in traffic and missed the school play or something that and broke for his door. And he said it really it broke his heart. He yeah. said so after that he started looking in the helicopter travel as a means to get back and forth from the training facility, the stadium. I mean, you know, the Lakers training facility in home without going through traffic. So. Um, this wasn't like a daredevil or some people looking at it like, oh, you know, because Kobe was rich. He, you know, he, he didn't have a respect for, you know, life. Or, it wasn't about that. He actually did the, oh, he, he actually did those things to be with his family. It was, I mean, tragic enough that him and his daughter passed away due to that. But, you know, we, we, don't, we don't, no one knows your day. Everybody's got a number. Everybody's got a day. You just don't know when it's up. Um, so, you know, let's just understand that what, what happened to him was a tragedy, but it wasn't based on his own greed or his own, you know, it, it wasn't anything. It, Listen, when, it, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. It was based on something um, more important to him, and that was his family. Um, you know, and like I said, there's other families that were lost. Um, I seen one heartbreaking thing where it was the father, uh, the coach. Uh, um, uh, you said her name. I can't remember it verbatim, but the female that uh, passed away in the helicopter, her husband said that Kobe handpicked her to be a defensive coach for his basketball team. Mm -hmm. um, she, he watched her uh, from different you know, leagues that he went to with his kids, and he chose her to be a part of his team because he respected her, her defensive tenacity, and he said he felt like they were almost kindred spirits in the actual uh, game of basketball, and it was, and so he had the woman there. So, like I said, the people that were with Kobe um, were people that he actually were were more family than travel companion. It wasn't like he was like, "Hey, everybody, I got a helicopter, you know, let's just do it big." These were people he actually cared about, and um, you know, that's just a message to all of us out here. You know, we all have people we care about. We all have our families. We all have extensive family. Right now, this is my family. You know, I just met. We have come together, and we like it's like a brotherhood almost in here. We all. No, it, it is a brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? We we've been doing this. You know, me and Steph. We found out that we got history going back to when we was children. And brotherhood, we, brotherhood, you know what brotherhood. I'm saying? So it's it's friends and family and people that we know closely. So you know, to to people who watch our show. Um, and you know, we, 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 as you watch our podcast, you know, we always talk about some wild shit. We laugh, we joke, but on the seriousness, what we should learn from this experience is that really respect and love the people that are around you and that are potentially that, you know, as, as long as they're good people, your potential circle, your immediate circle is always your strength and your foundation, but also be willing to have a potential circle because you never know the people's lives that you're going to impact by your actions. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kobe's touched a lot of people, and I'm sure his family, you know, it's, it's just for his wife and, you know, her children to move on is going to be a great process. Uh, it's going to be a strong uh, thing as far as the strength she's going to need from the people around her. And um, Vanessa Bryant did speak out, and when she spoke, she said a lot of, Support that she's gotten from people all around the world have in, have uh, and have have enabled her 
to deal with the process of losing her daughter and her husband because she understands that she is not alone in this process of grieving. Um, so, you know, we, we don't let tragedy always be the thing that brings us together. You know, we, we all come together for sporting events. We all love, you know, we all root for the same team, you know. There's nothing better than the bar. I mean, in the bar and, you know, you can have a total stranger. He got a Lakers jersey on. You walk in with your Lakers jersey. I mean, how many of us have been places and seen the guy with your jersey on or seen the guy with your team, they, you know, the guy, and you get, you give him the look. Or, you know, you say, hey, man, I don't know you. But, hey, man, you want to have a drink? I see you got the Kobe jersey on. I see you got the Lakers. You're a Lakers fan? You know, it's a lot of camaraderie that we can find in each other. And, you know, let's just – Start doing that, man. Find, like they say, give people their roses while they're above the ground because you don't know. You, you don't know, man. You know, um, give real quick, you, you got anything to add, Dom? No. Nah. I'm going I'm to close, <laughs> close this out on this real quick. Um, we, I, got, I do got that, uh, that, that track for you. Oh, yeah, we got exclusive freestyle coming up with y'all, too. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to close it out on a, mm-hmm. a track from Kobe. Kobe, for those that didn't know, Kobe did a little rapping, a little freestyle. Shaq had him dropping bars. Shaq had a battle. He went, and then Kobe went back and smashed him on the on the on the uh, battle. Dropped the uh, how my ass taste. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the ring. Um, but you know, we all know we can sit here and read Kobe's. You know his his entire life. Entire <laughs> life is the things that he did, his stats, his statistics. Um, at the end of the day, this guy was a father. He yeah. was a son. He was a hero, a role model. Some people hated him. Um, But all in all, he was a human, you know what I mean? And a lot of times we get caught up in, like you say, celebrating people's lives when they die. Um, I celebrated this dude. Every time I saw him, I felt like I knew the guy. I watched him, you know, from high school until, you know, he wasn't shooting with me in the gym, you know, the divorce, the... Him buying the ring, patching his marriage up. He ended up being a better father than he was on the NBA court. And because he learned, he like learned, I said, he, he learned, he learned as, people make as, as parents, as fathers, especially as a father growing up without a father, even growing up with a father. Sometimes as young men, it takes us time to grow as a man. Kobe did that. And respect the women like Vanessa. Well, of course. It's, it's definitely who, 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 who stayed there in the yes, state. Stay yes. I mean, look, um, women, women bear a lot, you know. But too much and too often we're hearing Mamba mentality. You know, Kobe's, you know, killer instinct, the desire, the, the you know. Yes, if you want to be like Kobe, yes, don't give up. Fight hard. But Mamba mentality means take care of your damn kids <laughs> because that's what Kobe did. So if you want to have the mumble mentality and you're one of these guys out here who's not taking care of your kids, if you're a mom who's not taking care of your kids and you're screaming mumble mentality, Kobe Bryant took care of his kids. It, right? it, it's like I said, it, Kobe, the mumble mentality is, you know, we're not going to get into the actual, you know, we could get into the actual nat- nature of it all as a snake or whatever. Yeah, but a snake with a venomous bite that it kills anything in his path. But his thing was the actual the ferocity. Mamba mentality meant really focus. The ability to focus on your goals, your dreams, and what's important. And I'm sure if any, many people are going to see different uh, speeches, different, uh, uh, you know, things, uh, uh, words, or whatever from Kobe Bryant. But if you notice, the one thing he always said is focus on your greatness. Um, and now, like I say, even with your children... You can always be a better parent. I can be. It, 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 it goes for everyone. You can always. We're going to make mistakes as human beings, but to be able to accept your mistake, take responsibility, and move forward, and do not do not let that define you. Do not let your mistakes define who you are. You your ability to move on beyond your mistakes defines who you are. Without a doubt, and um, you know, closing out, closing out as a Lakers fan, um. In my lifetime of 40 years on this planet, um, I've lost two, I've lost two too many, you know. I lost my older brother, Skeeter Bop, Danny, uh, Paul. Paul was a Lakers fan. Um, little Nerd. The list goes on and on. We're losing, we're losing, we're losing as people. Um, but in the Washington, D.C. area, as a Redskins fan, we lost Sean Teller, which was definitely dear to our hearts as Redskins fans. 
and now the NBA and Lakers fans all across the nation, we lose Kobe Bryant. Um, I just want to salute the guy, man. You know, this show is dedicated to Double him. Salute. Uh, to him and Gigi Double Bryant. salute. Um, I got this shirt made today for my son. They said the train was a little small. I might end up giving it to AJ and getting the girls to get it made. Can y'all see that clear on there? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to be selling them. I'm, I'm not gonna be, we're not going to be selling them. We're not going to be cutting into nobody's profit. But, uh, you know, we can get them for you. Um, we got the uh, Fuck Your Opinion shirts. Merchandise coming. I know you've seen them. You've seen them right here on the show today. You know, we're we, 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 we making it happen. We're making it happen. We got them for you coming soon. We got the T-shirts. We got the uh, hats, skull caps. We got the, the panties. <laughs> oh, look at all that shit. We got all that shit. Hey, you, can't, the, you can't be stepped the lover got, without the panties. We got, we got the condoms. And boxers. Everything. Boxer we, got, we got everything coming for y'all. We love y'all. Um, get ready for Taco Tuesday. We took, we took our... Taco Tuesday off this week because of the tragic uh, accident and crash this week, man. It blew our minds. Uh, it, it rocked the whole nation. nation. Right, it rocked the world. It bro. rocked the world, man. Kobe Bryant, we love you. Um, you know, Mamba, Mama Sita, all the fallen people in the crash, man. To y'all families, your, your thoughts and your prayers are, are here with us in the Fuck Your Opinion family. Um, we, love, we love this shit, man. That's what we do, man. We do this shit for y'all. We do it for us. We want to keep being great, keep loving you. Always remember, you have an opinion. Right. But fuck it. But fuck it. Fuck your opinion. And if you got something funky to say about Kobe or any motherfucking fuck day, your opinion. fuck your opinion. Hey, hey, God, God. And you know what? Get, uh, get up here in two weeks, man. And then, you know what? I, I want to say fuck something, too. Shit. I want to say one thing. I, don't, I really disapprove of any sports news media broadcaster speaking on the event that happened in 2003 and because I know a lot of people, you know, because there was one lady, a, a, a sports writer, I mean, well, I don't know what she was, some kind of reporter she called herself, but she went into the Kobe Bryant incident with the rape case and all, and it was a sister, and, and it was a sister that checked on that, but listen, we're not going to, I know people say, yeah, that's a part of life too, but yeah, we ain't going to do that, man. Listen, we don't wait to, you don't go to anybody's funeral and talk about how they owed you five motherfucking dollars. Death is the great equalizer, man. So I know we had, jo- even Dave Chappelle at the time when Kobe was living, had jokes. We all had jokes about Kobe and the situation, but listen, fuck your opinion, man, because only it's only one great judge. It's only one great book, and it's only one great way you going to get judged. Here and after, so you know, you know y'all better than nobody. Uh, real quick, but you, but you made one great book though. The book of life, man. The Bible. It's more. It's more than the Bible. No, I ain't talking about the book. about it. I'm not going. No, I'm not saying the Bible. What I meant. Let me make that clear. I'm not. I don't mean the Bible. I mean the book of life. When your day of judgment comes. If you're religious or not, you must believe that your pages will be turned in your life. Either you will see it or will be shown to you all of your greatest mistakes and conquers. So that's what I mean by the book. We all have a book. It's called the book of life. When it's your turn to go through the pages, you're going to see the mistakes you've made, misjudgments, and those who've misjudged you have made misjudgments against you. So that's what I mean by that. So fuck your opinion because... Ain't nobody gonna know when it's gonna get red, but you gonna get your uh, real quick. Um, I'm gonna just do what uh, Kobe did in his last game against Utah. As I stand up, check out the t-shirts. What day, what day was that? I don't know what day it was, but y'all see the t-shirts? We got it coming. Uh, yo, God, he dropped that shit, and uh, like Mama did, Mama, Mama out, Mama out, baby, Mama out. The Swiss second is celebration. The capsule of time with the ship on evaporation. Slash had a lot of emphasis. A big game of the fist, the liberal shorthand is. I think that way to have me spirit for advantage. I never forget what the rocks from me to the cannons. With the mic and hand, I'm a motor to you, man. I got your plan, allows me to kill my whole plan. First for first, the gates are first for first. My battle rounds are seen in the air and full force. I've been called captain. The scientific attractions. With the real days, made my brain. Made we go at this, knock the world off its axis. We design the atlas. We construct the globe with cheap sawns and graphics. If my mathematics calculated to the average, more errors than I would be doing errors already. Sit back and relax. Come on, let's catch my.
First guy I thought of when I heard this news the other day. No, hold on, don't turn it off yet. Don't turn it off yet. I gotta. I want to give a shout out. Y'all can hear me? Yeah. Hey, shout out real quick. Um, I had to give my man a shout out today. Uh, we got the. Oh, what, what's our Super Bowl prediction? Super Bowl predictions? I ain't got a horse in this race. Uh, I ain't got a dog in the fight either. But what's your, uh, uh, what's your opinion? Gotta have Super Bowl predictions. Uh, it's tomorrow. Uh, I mean, it's Sunday. I got um. I got Kansas City. I got Kansas City. I know that the, the fucked up part of me like hey San Fran, but fuck San Fran. No, but for real, um, I just think that Kansas City got a better defensive line than we ever had. So I don't know if, Can- if San Fran's gonna be able to run all over them. And if it comes to a passing game, I got Patty Mahomes doing way better than um uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I, that, that's how I got. It. I got Kansas City. Y'all, who you got? Kansas City. Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. I got Kansas City too uh, for the uh, for the win. I got to give a shout out to my man Frank. Anybody need their carpets done in the DMV area? He came out and they sliced me for the Super Bowl party I'm about to have. Professional carpet kid. You need your carpet done? He gonna do it right. The dude's a total professional. What's his name? Job done. Frank, professional carpet kid. Professional Carpet Care LLC. He got a number? I mean, yeah, of course he got a number. Yeah, well, drop, the digits. Digits. drop the digits. Drop the digits. One drop the digits. If you need your carpet clean, man, my man Frank gonna take care of your professional carpet care. Um, let me give you the digits real quick because he came by the crib today and sights me. Took a look at my big ass cane course. So probably I just got he's like, I ain't coming to yeah, that bad. Um, but yeah, you can reach him at 301 377 3750. One more time, that's 301 377 3750. Professional carpet cleaner. Get your carpet clean. Stop walking, stop having them bronze come over your house and the niggas come over your house with that dirty carpet. You got them Kool Aid stains and the blood guts. Hey, take your, your fucking trunk. shoes off when you come into people's house. It's nasty. Black feet. Black feet. Get your carpet black. clean. We love y'all. God bless. I'm on the back out. Oh, uh, shit. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 